Welcome to Beaver Park Golf Club. I'm Aaron Small, I'm the course manager. Beaver was formed in 1927. We have held the Irish Open twice, the Irish Close, and this year our senior cup team won the Ulster section. Uh, Beaver is a heavily played golf course. We have around 45,000 rounds a year. So it's vital that we're on top of things as greenkeepers. The good thing about having a lot of rounds of golf is that the club is financially secure. So that means as a course manager, uh, I have good machinery. So regarding revenue on the golf course, the run my end would be nearly 600,000 a year. This would cover wages, maintenance, uh, machinery, hire purchase, and really course, any course improvements. So good thing that we have a lot of money coming in bad thing that there's a lot of traffic so it's up to me as a course manager to um, you know detail the jobs in the best way to get the best out of the staff and have the golf course looking the best every day for the members and visitors. So what we're going to do now is take you around the machinery and show you what it takes to run a modern day-to-day -day golf course. Uh, we're in the shed now and we have uh, all our cutting machines that do all the cutting, the day-to-day -day maintenance. All our machines are Toro. Uh, we find them the most reliable and user-friendly. So this is a greens mower. This is called a 3250. This machine would have cut the greens this morning. This is a 3 mil in height. Uh, we also have what's called a red ball and a green ball system. So when the operator comes in after using it, he puts a red ball on and then the mechanic knows that it needs to be set for quality of cut and height of cut and check the oils and fluids. So then he'll put a green ball on it and the operator will know that it's ready to go in the morning. So all the machines are cleaned down after use. The grass uh, has nitrogen in it so it will rot the metal. So they have to be cleaned down before they come in. Uh, there's a couple down here have still yet to be cleaned, but the majority of them are washed. Also for a resale value, you'll keep it in better condition and you'll get better money for it when you're going to sell them. So this machine here is £30,000 and the life expectancy would be sort of five to seven years to get a good turnaround on value, resale value. So it's important that you keep them well serviced, well maintained, for you'll get more money. That's an easier sell for the golf club when you're bringing £5,000 back in for it, rather than trading it in for no value. It'll be an easier sell in the committee when you're bringing that money back in. Okay, this is the brush on our backup greens mower. The brush is designed to stand the grass up before the mowers cut it. So when the mowers go down, the brush goes down, it'll stand the poan up and other grasses and get a far better cut on it. So this is a vital tool for us, but it's not to be overused. It's quite aggressive, so it stops lateral growth, thins it out a wee bit, but more importantly, gets a far better cut on the leaf. So maybe once a fortnight or once a week, just depending on conditions. So that'll be up to the course manager to decide when he uses that. So we have two other 3250s. They are for tees and aprons. The aprons are around the green, the tee boxes is where the golfers play off. They're three wheel drive, they need to be just to go up the hills a wee bit more. So there's £30,000 each of those. Heights of cut? Heights of cut on tees and aprons would be 10 mil at the minute, 14 mil in the winter time. Just depending on conditions as well. So this is a sidewinder that has the versatility to move side to side to get closer to the bunkers. This is on a ram and hydraulically driven and just moves from side to side to get you closer so the wheel isn't going into the bunker. So the operator's not getting too close to it and the chance of kiping into the bunker. So it's more a health and safety thing than anything. Uh, we have two fairway mowers yet to be washed. Fairways are cut at the minute at 13 mil. This is a 5610 fairway mower. This costs in the region of 50,000. Uh, we would be cutting fairways 
three to four times a week. Uh, it's all about presentation, quality of cut. The mechanic would be sharpening this machine probably three times a year on a set of grinders. The key is to keep the machine sharp. There's no point in somebody going out and cutting grass if the machine's not sharp. That'll damage the leaf and give you problems with disease, etc. So we have two of those. This is just a slightly older model. This is a 6500. Uh, still cuts every bit as good as a new one, as long as the mechanic keeps them sharp, which he does. Same thing, it has the green ball on it, so that machine's ready to go for the morning. These are the rough mowers. This is a 4700. This machine now retails at 65,000. And you're looking at uh, two to two and a half days to cut all the rough on the golf course. This would be 50 mil in height, so two inches. Uh, you're talking roughly 80 pound a day to fuel it. So if you take an operator, fuel, and the price of the machine, the rough, which is probably the least important thing in a golf course, is probably the most expensive because of the vast area on the golf course but it's still an important part of the golf course because most golfers, unfortunately, play out of the rough. We have another one here. This is a newer model, same thing. If the blades are sharp, it'll cut as good. So we try and keep the blades sharp. Um, brilliant machines. Don't like the Jew so much, but if you can get away with the Jew off it, they'll cut superb and a really good width on it so you can cut the rough in a short time. So this is the John Deere sprayer. This is the latest machine they have. Now it doesn't have GPS, but we have a computer system here. Um, this will tell us what we're spraying in the hectare, literage, uh, pressure. So this is very good for the operator. Every machine is becoming more user friendly. Uh, it has to be for chemicals or for safety for the environment, so we have to be conscious of that. Any staff member that uses this machine would have to be qualified, otherwise he's not allowed to use it. Uh, spraying is a big thing on golf courses. We would spray, probably this machine would be out uh, average twice a week spraying. The booms would be 5.5 meters in width. Uh, you can get a 6.5 meter, but 5.5 uh, suits us with the undulations around the place. And it's quite quick, the machine so you're not wasting too much time anyway. So we have a pedestrian spreader, uh, an ICL spreader. This is for putting on fertilizer, and we have settings here for the really what this would open up, so how much that allows us in or out. So as an operator, you'll know what product you're putting on, what setting to go, so that's just putting the rate on per square meter. Um, this machine, is 650 pounds and this is a big thing that golfers and members don't realize how much it costs to run a green shed and this is one tool that we need but same thing keep them in good condition and they'll last for a long time so uh, most green shed will have an array of tra tractors all different horsepower all different sizes so this is our biggest horsepower this is 60 horse uh, massive tires on it because we use the big blower, this would be for the leaves in the winter time. So this will spread the weight. There'll be no ruts left for it. It'll be going into the areas that are damp and wet with the leaves. And that'll allow us not to make any uh, marks on the ground. Uh, we have a John Deere, a 4066R. Uh, this is quite a new machine. Uh, this would be used for verde draining. This is hydrostatic, whereas the Kabuta is geared. So this is hydrostatic, so this will allow us to verde drain and takes the trailers and stuff. So just a different array to what we need. Uh, we have an old Kabuta tractor, 42 horsepower. This tractor is 20 year old, so it's not all about having new and fresh machinery. It's about what works for the golf club. This only does maybe 100 hours a year, so there's no point in me spending 20 grand on a tractor when this will do me rightly. So you don't want to waste any of the club's money because you can put that money into better machinery as in your cutting machines that are more important than a shiny new tractor. So again, 
an older tractor, yeah, um, 20 plus years, but doesn't do a lot of hours. What it does suits us. This is a mat and a brush on the back. So when we put sand onto the greens or fairways, we can mat it in. So that works the sand into the surface, taking it away and putting it in there. So that'll help with drainage and levels. Um, yeah, vital piece of machinery. So this is a Procore. This is for aeration. This is one of Toro's best selling machines. They have the lion's share of the market on this. And the reason being is very robust, uh, reliable. It also undulates the ground very well. So you can do tees, aprons, greens, walk-off areas. It has all different settings for heights. Uh, you have a speed setting. So the closer pattern you go, that'll get more aeration into the ground. So on the back of it here, at the minute, those tines are 15 mil solid tines. So we can change any of those tines according to what processes we're doing on the golf course. So really good machine. Cost? Cost around um, 25,000 pounds now. Plus fat? Plus fat, yeah. Okay, uh, these are the hand mowers. Uh, so they're the same cut quality of cut as your greens mowers, only these are narrower and give a narrower stripe. They also press the ground a bit more down, giving you a wee bit more speed, just simply because they're heavier. Uh, we don't use these in the summertime because they just, it takes a lot of staff to uh, cut all your greens, so we have other jobs for them. But these are primarily just for the winter time, so the machinery, the heavy machinery isn't going out onto the greens. These are a great asset for us. This is a top dresser, so we'll tip sand into the back of it and that spreads it out on two disc spinners. Um, we would top dress probably 120 tonne to 100, 150 tonne a year onto the greens. This helps drainage, it helps levels, it's a very important tool. Sand is one of the most important tools for greenkeepers but not for the golfers. The golfers don't like it and the mechanics don't like it because it blunts the blade but we have to use it, it's vital. That what kind of sand do you use? We use Darcy's uh, sand, which is double wash sand and proper um, you know, granular size. So it, there's an art in the sand, it's not just people think you dig sand out of the ground or builder sand. So it's proper sand that uh, we use, it's around 35 pound a tonne. So this is what's called a Verdi drainer. So this machine is a Viderman GXI8 and that has, there's no tines on it at the minute, but they have the capability to go down probably 10 inches into the ground. And what that does, that has a heave on it and breaks the ground up and that lets the water come down through the ground and makes the greens or fairways firmer. So this is a vital piece of machinery. The best time to use it is when the ground is firm so it can fracture the ground. That leaves, that means that the roots can go down the fractures, creating better root depth. So that'll do for drought stress, but also that'll get the drainage channels so the water will be able to come down the ground and away from the surface. So that's a very good machine, but used at the right time of the year. We're in the machinery shed at Beaver Park Golf Club, which is a vital end of the whole uh, procedure, what we do on the golf course. Uh, if the machines aren't right, the golf course isn't right. Quite simple as that. Uh, so here we have uh, a ramp that we have probably for a year. So the mechanic will get this up, he'll check it for quality of cut, height of cut, he'll do all this greasing, really take a good look around the machines when they're up. You know, you can't beat getting underneath the machines seeing a damaged pipe or something like that. So the ramp for the sake of £4,000, uh, this is a vital piece of machinery that we couldn't do without and it also Saves the mechanics back, he's not lying on cold ground. And just basically you can see a lot more. So we'll go around the shed here. We have uh, all the filters, fuel filters, oil filters, hydraulic filters, air filters. Everything we need that we're using regularly. Other parts will not use that regularly, will not buy it in for obvious reasons. Uh, but these, these are just a good wee thing just to keep everything in stock and know where you're at. Uh, 
tools, good bench um, with a blower broke down here, so we'll either try and fix that or it might need a new blower. It's uh, maybe had too many birthdays, so we'll just maybe invest in a new blower. We're quite a leafy golf course, so we need all the blowers working well. Um, we also have the board the mechanic has, so he has machines to repair. We have our height of cuts for things. Uh, if any of the boys see anything wrong with the machines, they'll write it up. He'll know what needs done. We have our grinders over here. We also have, we write up when the machines are ground, so we know uh, basically when we've done them. We have a spare set of units here for the greensmores, so if anyone hits anything, uh, we can just come and change the units over quite quickly. Uh, that's a machine that has been sharpened. The only downside to sharpening a lot is wearing away the blades. So if we have to buy cylinders, you're looking at maybe £300 for a cylinder. So three, six, £900 just for cylinders for those. But at the same time, if the machine's not sharp, it may as well not be going out. So keep them, keep them sharp.